It's July 24th, 2018, and today I wanted to discuss topping your tomato plants. Now what is topping your tomato plants? It's exactly like it sounds. You are literally going to cut the top of the main stem off of your tomato plant. And why would you want to do that? Well, why you would want to do that depends totally on your situation. Here in southeastern North Carolina, we have a really long summer. My tomato plants have been in the ground since about March 23rd. And I want you to take a look at them. This is a six foot ladder right here. And this tomato plant is just towering over the ladder. Uh, this tomato plant's at least eight feet tall, as are a lot of the tomato plants down here. So what you're seeing is that my tomato plants are outgrowing my infrastructure. So right now they're towering over the trellises that I have built for them and what's happening is that every time we get a windstorm that kicks up more than 10 mile an hour winds I'm having my tomato plants snap on me. And you can kind of see that effect here. If you can see that we just had a windstorm the other day and my tomato plant snapped on me and I had to stand it back up and it's, it's getting damaged and it's rotting. So in order to control the growth, I'm going to have to need, I'm going to have to top them and cut the heads off so they stop growing up taller. Uh, the other reason why I have to cut them is because I am having pretty lousy fruit set. So because it is so hot right now, I'm having 75 degree nights and 90 and humid days, um, nine out of 10 flowers that I get are dropping off. So your tomato plant is constricted by this little root system and it can only provide so much energy for the plant. So what I wanna do is I wanna maximize my chances of setting fruit by removing the heads of the plant so they stop growing up, they stop encouraging uh, leaf growth. I want that to stop and I want them to put as much energy into the flowers as possible. Um, you may also want to employ this as a strategy if you live in zone 6 or lower because at this point we're in the end of July and any fruits or any flowers that set fruit right now, you're at least a month and a half to two months away for that fruit to become ripe. So if you're in a place where it's still in the 80s and it drops down into the 50s or 60s at night, you're probably not having an issue with fruit set. So topping your tomato plants at this point may be a good strategy to get as much energy into the flowering and setting fruit process as possible because you're gonna have frost come around October 1st and if these, if you're still setting fruit and the plant is putting a lot of its energy into leaf growth, um, you're going, it's gonna take such a long time for your, for your fruit to mature that um, you may get frosted on before they actually set mature tomatoes. So there's a lot of great reasons to top your tomato plants and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now as I mentioned before, what topping your tomato plant is, is cutting the head off the main stem. So what is the main stem? The main stem is the thick trunk that everything on the tomato plant grows off of. So this right here is the main stem. Now early when this was a much younger tomato, what I did was I double stemmed my uh, tomato plant by allowing a sucker to grow off in one of the directions. And that sucker has turned into a second main stem. What is a sucker? A sucker is one of these little offshoots that grows on the node of each tomato. They typically grow between a leaf and the main stem. So if you can see this right here, right here, try to get it into focus, right here you have a little sucker that's growing in between the leaf and the main stem. If you let that sucker grow, it will grow into uh, its own individual main stem. So you could have main stems all over the place. I usually like to have two main stems because that gives you a good amount of fruit production um, while still allowing your tomatoes to grow up to a good size. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lop the heads off the main stem, you're gonna follow it up, 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 and eventually that will get cut off. We are also going to remove any suckers along the way because I wanna maximize 
what little time I have left in the season for these plants uh, to get the fruit to turn mature. And I'm actually moving at the end of September, so in about 45 to 50 days I'm going to have to rip out anything that I have in terms of plants. So I want all of these flowers that you see up here to have as best a chance as possible to set fruit and for that fruit to have maximum energy from the root to turn into mature fruit in only about 45 to 50 days. So the first thing you want to do is you want to start with a sanitized, washed, and dried pair of clean shears. So we're going to follow our main stem up, 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 up all the way to the top of this tomato plant. So I'm going to find the top flower cluster right here and I am going to cut the head off right behind or right in front of the or behind the flower cluster. So right here you see the flower and you see the stem. That gets cut off and now that flower cluster is the top of this stem. That stem is not going to grow any further. I'm also going to take this sucker off right here so that does not turn into its own branch and continue the growth. We're also going to follow the next, uh, the next main stem up and you're going to see up here there are new flowers starting to bloom. This is going to be so far over my trellis that it's going to break. So we're going to cut this off at the topmost flower cluster that still has flowers remaining, which is actually going to be right here. Look at that. I just cut off a whole tomato plant practically, but there are no viable flowers on here. There was one cluster here where all the flowers dropped off because of the humidity and then there was a new flower cluster forming up here, but it'll be so high up, if that were to set big heavy mor mortgage lifter fruits, it would snap the plant. So that's gonna go bye-bye as well. So will this sucker right here. So we're gonna continue to clean these up, and I'll show you a few more examples as I progress. Here's another example of a much lower hanging San Marzano. We're going to lop off this fruit cluster or right after the flower cluster. So right here, right here. So now this is not going to grow any further. We're also going to get rid of this little sucker right here. So this will be the end of this San Marzano vine. Similarly we're going to go over here to this San Marzano vine which is the end of a, of a uh, fruit cluster which will hopefully be a fruit cluster. We're going to cut it off right here. And then that is effectively topped. We're also going to take the sucker off. And hopefully this will all maximize our production on what remaining flowers we have while not destroying my trellis. Let's clean up this Cherokee purple right here. Cut it off right at the fruit cluster. Cut off this sucker. There's another sucker we can get rid of above the fruit or right above the fruit cluster. We'll leave that there. Cut this sucker off. See that? Not a whole lot we can do with that one. Here we have yet another fruit cluster with a sucker growing above it. We'll leave the fruit cluster. Cut the sucker off. Same thing here. We can remove this entire sucker right here and try to promote the growth of these tomatoes right here. We'll cut this one right above the fruit or right above the flowers. Get rid of this sucker. Maybe this will set a couple of fruits. We can remove this one and top this right above the flowers. And what we're doing is we are freeing up as much energy as possible for the plant to set fruit. We are creating more airflow because right now it's disease central. It's the most humid part of the year for almost all of the country. So we're trying to make these last as long as we can and maximize our fruit production either before fall 
comes and we get frosted or before uh, it just outgrows all of our trellises and falls over and snaps under our own weight. See how the diseases are starting to set in? That is blight right there. You can tell by the patterns how they go uh, a yellowish pattern around brown spots. That's typically blight. When you're at a main stem like this and you are going to cut the top off the main stem right at the flower cluster, it's also important to cut off the sucker that is at the node or else all you're going to do is force the growth into this and you effectively won't be topping your plant because it'll stop here, the energy will just back up and come right out that sucker and it'll be like you never topped the plant at all. When you're done, your ground is going to be littered with tomato leaves. Whatever you do, resist the urge to compost them. Tomato leaves should never be composted. No nightshade should ever be composted. Tomatoes, squash, peppers, potatoes, eggplant. And that's because they are so prone to disease and also they're very prone to insects laying eggs within their leaves. So if you were to compost these, they could overwinter in your soil and then you'll wind up spreading disease the next year. Uh, you're supposed to rotate your crops. If you reuse your soil, you're not supposed to plant anything that came in contact with nightshades. Uh, you're not supposed to plant other nightshades in that soil for at least three years. So that means if you planted tomatoes in specific soil in a specific spot, you shouldn't replant them in that spot for at least another three years. Plant them in different soil or in a different location because of how susceptible they are to disease and how resilient the diseases usually are. But you will see my plants are much more manageable now. I really took a lot of green off. Now when you do do this, you should try your best to resist cutting off leaves. By leaves, I mean just little 90 degree nodes that come off the main stem because these are the solar panels for the plant. So try not to cut these off unless they are diseased, they're severely discolored because they're old or they're really chewed up from bugs. Try to leave as many leaves as you can because that'll give your plant more energy to um, more rapidly set and grow the fruit. But all of the suckers, you can see how many flowers I actually wound up having to cut off because just of how many suckers there were everywhere. So I left a reasonable number of flowers to where some of them will set fruit and I will get tomatoes out of them in the next 45 to 60 days. But come the middle end of September, I need to be done with these plants. So figure for yourself, start topping your plants uh, around 45 to 60 days before you think your season is going to end. That will allow the roots to concentrate as much energy as they can into fruit set and production and making those fruits grow and ripen as quickly as possible so you can use them before either they outgrow their containers or their environment or frost sets in and kills them off for the year. As always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, like, comment, share the videos. I always appreciate it. Thanks everybody.